103. That's it for all the scores and highlights. And today, we're going to close with something a little different. A commentary by our very own Bobby Tannen. Bobby? <laughs> Gail, this is my first commentary on ASCN, and I'd just like to start by commentating on the TV and print radio journalists who call themselves critics. And after reading what they've said about me, now I can tell you why they are called critics. Because, boy, they can criticize. <laughs> like, and I quote, Bobby Tannen is hands down the biggest idiot on television, end quote. <laughs> ah, here's another. And I quote, a brain dead Bobby Tannen proves every night why most ex-jocks should never be allowed on television, end quote. Well, let me tell you something. Maybe I quote, I'm nothing but a dumb ex-jock, and maybe people laugh at some of the things that I have to say, which sometimes may or may not make much sense or might be considered incoherent, or just plain stupid. <laughs> I love my job, end quote. I do, end quote. And I love my country, quote. I do, end quote. This is the greatest country in the world with the greatest sports, quote, in, end quote, the world with the greatest scores anywhere. 95, 90, 31, 27. I could read American scores till I'm red, white, and blue in the face. Now, you want to criticize? You want to go behind the Iron Curtain? Listen to some of their scores, like, well, soccer, two to one, two to two, Z to Z. These are scores. Yeah, right, right. Uh, sure they are. End quote. Gail, take it. No, thanks. Uh, Gail, and I quote, back to you, end quote. springs to continuously sense and individually adjust to your face the closest safest most comfortable gillette sensor together with the richness of foamy shave cream for the best shave a man can get gillette, the best a man can get. when you're cooking your best nothing tastes quite like butter nothing bastes quite like butter nothing bakes quite like butter mmm butter when you're cooking your best, nothing tastes quite like butter. When things get tough, remember, Shake and Bake makes it easy to treat your family to plump, juicy pork chops without frying. Why fry? Shake and Bake. All right, listen up. I got a little riddle for everybody. Now, why do I feel like I'm at the circus? Uh, I don't know, sir. Because I just got through watching a clown. No, no, no. I take that back. Bobby, you're not a clown. Clowns at least have the good sense to squirt seltzer and keep their mouths shut. Wait a minute, sir. I worked very hard on that commentary. Bobby, 
I know we hired you to be an idiot, and you've done a hell of a job. Thank you, sir. But now, who the hell told you you could be a cretin? Mac? Was it you? Uh, actually, sir, I didn't know anything about it. I had a family emergency. My wife thought a dingo had taken our littlest, but we found her sleeping in a hamper. But uh, that's no excuse. Uh, this happened on my watch, and uh, I take full responsibility, sir. You damn right. Now, Gail, guess who else is holding a ducket on this train of blame? Wait a minute. I'm not the one who imploded on national television. Yeah, but I bet you knew somebody who was about to and didn't do anything to stop it. No, I tried to give Bobby some suggestions for his commentary, which he rejected. Now, Gail, the only suggestion you should have given Bobby was, don't do that boneheaded commentary. <laughs> Sweet mother of tangle webs and plot thickeners! You're all holding ducats on that train of blame. Was I that bad? I tell you something. When I was playing ball, there were men on that team I didn't like, and I'm sure they didn't like me. But on game day, they were my teammates. And I could count on them, and they could count on me. Okay. I guess that's not going to happen here. Okay. Show of hands. Who in here is feeling real bad right now? Yeah. That's what I thought. Tough room. All right, let's get back to work. Uh, Gail, can I have a word with you about the explosion of animated programs on primetime television? The what? Just stay, 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 stay. <clears throat> Bobby was going to set himself ablaze, and you did nothing. You're much more complex than I thought. Yeah? I feel pretty guilty right now. Ah, oh, that'll pass. <laughs> I don't know why I let him do it. Because you are basically a very competitive person who's into denial. I do not compete with Bobby. Oh, Gail. You didn't just want him to fail. You wanted to watch. Him fail. No, no, no. You didn't just want to watch him fail. You wanted to sit next to him and watch him fail. No, 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 no. You didn't just want to sit next to him and watch him fail. You wanted to sit next to him watching him fail while the whole country watched you watching him fail. That's not good, is it? Oh. Dear Mom, you were right. I... Stink. Love. Your son. Come in. <laughs> Come in. It's open. Hey, kid, how you doing? Oh, uh, just writing a letter to my mom. You want to hear it? No. Say, you got anything to drink? <laughs> now, Bob, you got to shake this whole thing off. Jeez, how many different kinds of beer you got in here? Got 147 from 98 different countries. It's a hobby of mine. I... I don't drink them, I just collect them. Well, good for you. So Bob, I came over to tell you, you gotta shake off this criticism. It's not easy. It hurts, Mac. I thought I had friends over there. Yeah, so did I. Say, how's this Alpshorn beer? Dark, bitter, brewed to small Swiss village for about four centuries. I stink, don't I, Mac? No, you don't stink. Now, how's this Pampas beer? Light, sweet. A favorite of the gauchos. Those are Argentinian cowboys. Nah, you know what real cowboys drink, don't you, Bob? Rappaport. The one beer to have when you're having a Rappaport beer. You're going to drink a Rappaport? What can I tell you? I'm a company guy. Wish I were a company guy. Trust me, you don't. You don't, Bob. What's that expression? First row for shooters, second row for rooters. Well, you're a shooter, Bob. 
You go out and you take chances. You don't take crap from anybody. Me, I, I spent my whole life in the second row, rooting for shooters like you. And you know what rooters do, don't you, Bob? They marry the first girl that smiles at them. They go out and have 13 kids. Then they can't walk by a mirror without smashing their fist into it. Oh, Mac, I didn't know that. I'm so sorry. I don't want your pity, you idiot. Look, Bob, I don't know how to say this without it sounding like I'm coming on to you, but I need you. <laughs> I need you to shoot for me. I could turn you into a first-rate journalist. Let me help you, Bob. I need it just as much as you do. Hi. Hi. Sorry I'm late. That's okay. It's for you. What's this? It's some copy I wrote for you. I I'm sorry about what happened today. Well, don't worry about it. Distant memory. No, I feel really bad. Gail, forget about it. Let's just drop it. Everything's fine. Max gonna mold me. Max gonna mold you? Yep. Yeah. Oh. oh, listen, thanks for the copy, but it's all right, Mac. Help me write my own. How's Mac going to mold you? I don't know. You're going to have to ask him. <laughs> I'm just putty in the master's hands. Oh, speaking of the master. Okay, guys, you're out in 10. Have a good one. Bobby, remember what I told you? I can help with that. <laughs> Did you write this? Uh huh. It's good. Thanks. But yours seems, what's the word I want? Dumb. Thanks. Hi, I'm Gail Roberts. And I'm Bobby Tannen. They sure played some basketball in the NBA this week. Oh, they sure did, Gail. They sure did. <laughs> Now, those Celtics were green with envy, while those high-flying rockets from Houston must have brought some astronauts with them because they were defying gravity tonight. Akeem, the dream, proved a nightmare for Boston, scoring a season-high 42 points. Meanwhile, Larry Bird is still in the coop, nursing his bad back. Now, with Bird grounded, Chris Ford is anything but in the driver's seat. Solid things. Pride. Dedication. Anderson windows and patio doors are built to stand the test of time. Through the desert sun, through the years of rain, from the shores of California to the coast of Maine. Anderson, build your dreams of solid things, we'll build tomorrow in. Come home to quality, come home to Anderson. If you've developed a fear of frying. Remember, Shake and Bake makes it easy to make crisp, juicy chicken for your whole family. Without frying. Why fry? Shake and Bake. Sinus pain, sinus pressure, it really, really hurts. Sinutab combines Tylenol's painkiller with Sudafed's decongestant to work better than either one alone. It stops the pain. Sinutab stops sinus pain. Open smiles, kisses from a child, family photographs, and laughs. And I love you too. A lot of people do. That's why Little Debbie is America's number one snack cake. In a real-life nightmare of multiple personalities, there's only one way out. See a special 48 hours Wednesday at 10, 9 Central and Mountain. From the current true crime bestseller, a riveting story of modern-day piracy and murder. Did you kill Mac or Muff Graham? Learn the startling facts behind the crime. She lied to us. They've reached a verdict. And the sea will tell Tuesday. Northern Exposure, coming soon to CBS. Now, Missy, you you were runner-up in uh, in the 
Don't tell me. In the, uh, that's all right. Don't be afraid to use your notes. Okay. In the National Women's Amateur Golf Tournament. That's it. That's right. Very good. Now keep going. Boy, that must have been terribly disappointing. So close. Yeah, it was. Good, good. Missy, how old were you when you started? No, 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 no. Don't you... give up that thought. Probe. Dig deeper. Find out how it felt to come so close. Missy, if you don't mind, I'd like to probe. I'd like to dig a little deeper. I'd like to find out just how <laughs> it felt to come so close and not... It was disappointing. It was disappointing. Disappointing. <laughs> I'll bet it was. But tell me about when you were a child. Did you... No, 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 no. Don't something? let her off the rope so easy. Go after her. Hey, do you mind? This is not the topic I enjoy discussing. Just a few more minutes. A few man. more minutes, Missy. You're being a great sport and very helpful. Now, Tannen, go to work. Talk about it. No. Talk about it. No! Why don't you talk about something? Oh, careful, Bob. What? It's like how it felt when your third wife left you for your second wife. <laughs> talk about it. No. Talk about it. Oh, no. Talk Introduced them. Ooh, and they're still together. Yeah, that's right. They're blacksmiths in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. What up about? <laughs> they have a catering business as well. One's a vet. They take care of sick animals. How do you like that? One they wanted to adopt. Did I ever tell you about them? <laughs> but they're not going to now. Because no one will trust them with a baby. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to know? No, no. <laughs> Way to go, Bob! Way to go! Oh, he's better. He's really better. I nailed him, though. <laughs> Didn't I? Didn't oh, I? yeah, honey. You nailed the hell out of him. <laughs> you know, Gail, Bobby's getting pretty good out there. Yeah, he got through it without drooling. <laughs> oh, my. Show of hands. Who in the room's feeling a little threatened right now? <laughs> oh, please. No, I tell you, I once had a similar situation with old Stu Ramsey. God bless his soul. You know, it wasn't long after you started. I turned to old Stu after one of your stellar performances, and I said to him, hey, Stu, she's good, isn't she? And I'm telling you, he gave me a look, bore a hole right through me. I tell you, I still get the willies just thinking about it. Woo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> Bobby Tannen does not threaten me. Oh, there's that look. There it is. Woo-hoo. <laughs> I'll tell you something. You better be on your toes with that interview with Vladi Divac tomorrow. Or the new Bobby Tannen, honey, he's gonna run circles around you. <laughs> yeah. Vladi, how you doing? Very glad to meet you. <laughs> Stand up. How tall are you? Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, it's very nice to say. Blade? I'm single. It's late. What are you doing here anyway? Oh, just straightening up. At uh, three o'clock in the morning? Is it three already? Oh my God. <laughs> what are you doing here? I couldn't sleep. I'm nervous about that interview with Vladi tomorrow. I just came down to you know, walk it. Yeah. <sighs> What's this? Oh, nothing. Los Angeles Lakers, your interview. Do I have this? Uh, it's not very good. I just found it tonight. Well, can I take a look at it, please? Thank you. D, 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 D. There's nothing in yeah, there. You're absolutely right. Pages 121 through 150. No, just about 40 pages, that's all. <laughs> Thank you. What are you, hoarding research? You have the same access to material as I do. You are. You are. You're hoarding research. You've been here long enough to find things. Listen, I can understand why some of the people here might not want me to succeed, but not you. Not you. I thought we were getting closer. I like you, Bobby. But you can't just expect to have everything handed to you. You think I don't know that? You think this isn't the toughest job I ever had? Come on. You're good, Gail. I want to be as good as you. I want to be the best team on television. But I can't do that without your help. This isn't a competition, you know. Yes, it is. 
Look, I didn't realize it myself until I saw you practicing with Missy. Got my adrenaline going, and yes, I am here till three in the morning, and yes, I am hoarding material, and yes, I am competing with you. That's not a good idea. My last three years of pro ball, I played it on two bad knees. After a game on Sunday, I couldn't walk till Friday, but I, I made every game and I led the league in touchdowns all three years. You don't want to compete with me, Gail. I, I think I'll just borrow this, if you don't mind. Don't chap your lips reading through it. <laughs> don't poke your eye out trying to put your glasses on. <laughs> After leading his Yugoslavian national team to the silver medal in the 1988 Olympics, Vlade Divac was drafted the next year by the Los Angeles Lakers. In his first year with the team, Vlade was only one of two players to appear in all 82 games, highlighted by his selection to the 1990 NBA All-Rookie Team. Hi, I'm Gail Roberts. And I'm Bobby Tannen. And today, today we, we have as our guest, guest Vlade Divac. <laughs> Thank you. Dobra voce. Dobra voce. <laughs> that means good evening. <laughs> Vlade, last season must have been very satisfying for you. Yes, very satisfying. You scored 701 points in your first year. That's not bad. Very satisfying. <laughs> Including a season high of 25 against Sacramento. Very satisfying. Mm -hmm. 27 against Sacramento. It was 25. She's right, 25. Ah, oh, I'd love Vlade. That means thank you. <laughs> Vlade, do you remember that Sacramento game? That shot you took at the end of the first quarter that they disqualified? Well, they should have counted it. Yes, yes, I think so too. It was a very good shot. Very good shot. Yeah, of course it was. Let's take a look at it. Now, here's the play in question. With the buzzer sounding as the ball apparently is still in your hands. But I took the liberty to re-examine the play with a very special clock. And I discovered that you released the ball with actually two one-hundredths of a second left in the game. See? See the ball? See? It? Oh. Vlade. I sent the league the tape and they agree. You now have 27 against Sacramento for a total of 703 points. Thank you, Bobby. More than, more than. That means you're welcome. <laughs> Vlade, you left home when you were 12 to pursue basketball. That's right. You moved to the town of Kraljevo. Yes, Kraljevo. Very good. Very Thank good. <laughs> Kraljevo, Kraljevo. How I weep for you. Oh, I can't wait to hear why you're weeping. <laughs> I'm Wimpy Gale because that's the town in which 6,000 of its inhabitants were executed by the Gestapo. Very sad. Very sad. Oh, I'm sorry. Very, very sad. Very sad. Very sad. Oh, that's terrible. But on to happier things, Gale. <laughs> Tell me this. What was your, uh, what's the more satisfying moment as a basketball player? Oh, well, that's uh, difficult. It was, uh... Was it game four of the Western Conference playoffs against Phoenix? We scored 18 points and had eight rebounds. Maybe that was a good one. No, it was leading the Yugoslav Junior Olympic team to a gold medal in 1985. <laughs> but not better than scoring the winning basket to lead partisan over slogan than Yugoslavia national championships. Hook shot from the top of the key over the outstretched arms of Niko Drazanov. Oh boy, that was good. How do you know this? He doesn't. Drazanovic didn't play for slogan in that game. He was kicked off the team the week before for getting in a fight in Zagreb with those two fishermen from Korchula. Really? No, yes. no, you're thinking of Pepovich Drazanovich was traded from Sloga to Red Star for Niki Salom and a player to be named later. Oh, how do you know all these things? But I'll tell you what, she's wrong about one thing. That fisherman that Drazanovich fought with, well, he was from Mostar. He was not, not, not from Korchula. He couldn't have been from Mostar. You are wrong. Mostar isn't on the water, is it, Vlade? I have never heard of Mostar. It's the provincial capital of Herzegovina. Okay, if you say so. I thought it was Mostar. Well, you were wrong, 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 wrong. You still wrong. want to know my most satisfying basketball moment? What? Well, it's up to you, really. Yeah. I was eight years old. I was playing in my first game for my school in Priapolia. And the 10 seconds left in the game, I got... You drove down the court, passed your cousin. You took a shot, which missed. But, but you got your own rebound, and you scored with no time left on the clock. Psst, big deal, doesn't bear was a grab. Oh, that wasn't satisfying. Sorry, yeah, well, that was satisfying. What, more satisfying than his second game with Partizan when he held Petrovic to four points, may I ask you? Yes! Don't tell me about my most satisfying basketball moment. How do you know all these things about me? I live my life, not you. Why don't you tell me how many times I made love to my wife? <laughs> You're sick! Best <laughs> <laughs> 
Good Sports will be back after these brief messages. That was good, right? Uh-huh. Of all these cold medicines, only one combines the pain reliever in Advil with the medicine in Sudafed, Coadvil. Last year, 7 million people discovered it. It was a sinus as well as, as, as a head cold. Lead weights in my face all through here. It felt like a clogged drain. Coadvil just cleared everything up. It was like the lead weights had just gone away. I was not drowsy with Coadvil at all. Try Coadvil, and the next cold won't seem so bad. Coadvil, advanced formula for cold and sinus relief. Kids, we're in trouble. Show them, Billy. These are Del Monte vegetable classics. Memorize this box. Parents can make these vegetables in three minutes. Oh. Fancy ones with sauces. Your mom and dad are going to love these. And then you know what that means. New Del Monte vegetable classics. So easy and delicious, some people are nervous. Next, mixed signals from Saddam Hussein. He reportedly orders his forces out of Kuwait, but the White House demands proof. Plus, Iraq's deadly missile hit on U.S. troops. Also ahead, a home contractor in the Hall of Shame. He got paid and didn't do the job. And forbidden fruit, a special report on a hidden danger. Coming up next at 11. So? So? You were really good. So are you. Surprised? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> but it was, it was fun competing with you. Thank you. You know, there's something I never thought about before tonight. Uh, that people are actually tuning in because they like watching us together. Mm. You find that so hard to accept? No, because I'm at peace knowing that I am so much better than you. Come on. Okay. Yes. Kim, so many chicho tanachuno. Would you have dinner with me? Oh, yahim prosciut. Yahim prosciut. I want smoked ham. Well, vanas tarekatuchti. The birds live, but the trees are dead. Ya prosciut em. With a mustache. What, I'm a ham with a mustache? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think the mustache looks like a ham. Oh. The ground war. Allied forces continue their massive push into Kuwait. Dan Rather joins Charles Kuralt and Leslie Stahl on a special one hour edition of America Tonight. A toddler falls three stories into a Russian river. A lot between the fall. And drowning that he was gone. Witness a miracle on Rescue 911 Tuesday. Wednesday, a young mother in danger. I saw a man get shot. Puts Jake and McCabe on their toughest assignment <laughs> ever. Do you have duty diapers? On Do Jake and the diapers? Fat Man. Yes. Then, <gasps> trapped in a real life nightmare of multiple personalities, there's only one way out. Okay. A special 48 hours after Jake and the Fat Man. Next Monday. Six, seven, eight murders every day. The story you've been waiting for. 900 people were murdered in this city in the last year. And that's why cops call it Murder Row. Hey, I'm talking to you! A story too powerful to forget. And one of these news people won't live to report it. You must see WIOU next Monday. This is CBS. <laughs>